In this short video, we're going to look at examples of overlay analysis. Overlay combines the spatial attributes, the spatial locations of particular features within each other. I have another video that speak explicitly to spatial joins where we count the number of point features within polygon features. In this example, I'm going to expand on this by looking, this, looking at this example of Guilford County, food deserts, food access with high schools. And we'll use some examples of some of the overlays that we can utilize using the ArcGIS Pro toolbox. In this example we're looking at here, we've got this blue outline that I've extracted from all counties of Guilford County. And so I selected it by location, or I even went to map and select by rectangle, you know, actually selecting by the cursor and exporting it out. The next thing that I did is I ran something called the clip because we're going to run another clip and get rid of all of this other extraneous information here because we're going to just look at this food environment here within this blue, uh, this blue rectangle or this blue county. I'm going to run a clip here because I have zip codes for all of North Carolina when in reality I just want to create the zip codes for just Guilford County. And so when I go to analysis and tools, some of these tools are going to be good data preparation tools. Some of these are going to be good analytical tools. I've got a number of different tools here that are come from extract, overlay, proximity, this type of pairwise overlay that I haven't done much of in the past. And then proximity analysis, which we'll show a brief example of. Like I said before, I already have videos on buffer analysis, variations of buffering, as well as uh, spatial joins. Now, in this particular example, I'm going to run a clip. And it's a good data preparation tool where I'm going to look at the zip codes, and I'm going to clip them with North Carolina data. You can see the output feature class is going to be for the database that I'm working with for this particular project. I'm going to click Run. So all I'm going to do is extract the zip codes that exist within my study area because essentially I want, I want to get rid of everything else. Now, I already created a Guilford High School. All I already created the Guilford High Schools. I already created the food deserts. And so to be honest with you, I can pretty much get rid of everything else. And so I'm going to be working just with these data. And I'm going to look at these food deserts here. Now I've got a couple of other tools. I'm going to show an example of the intersect. And so when I go to tools, I already did the extraction. I can do, I have something called the intersect. And the intersect is going to give me features that combine both spatial and attribute information for particular feature classes. In class, we've talked about a couple of different types. And so my input feature classes, for one, we're going to look at Food Desert Clip. And then we're going to look at the zip code data. And so we're going to run a spatial intersection. And so this is going to be the Food Desert Tracks Clip when I run this. And so I'm looking for all the areas that are going to be similar to each of these. And when I run this, watch what I get here. I'm going to exit out of this. Now, these are all the areas that are similar. Now, it looks a lot the same as the food desert tracks. Now, what's the difference? When I right mouse click and open my attribute table, what I've done is I've added all the attributes attached to my, that were contained in my zip codes are now part of this newly created intersection. And that's extremely important. And so I'm assigning the attributes from one to the other. And now for these food deserts, I can look at the median household income within these. And the resulting feature class is going to be an intersection of these. And so previously, when I looked at my food deserts right here, I went to right mouse click, open attribute table. It didn't have a lot of information about these. Now, I'm going to do another example here. Now, with my schools, 
I have my Guilford High Schools. I have my zip codes. I'm going to right mouse click and open my attribute table. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see what the average income for each of these high schools is. Because if I right mouse click on the Guilford High Schools, this just gives me information about the principal name. So I want to get a good idea as the type of neighborhood it is, type of neighborhood it's within. And so once again, I can utilize this clip. And so the important thing is that I'm going to assign the attributes from one to the other, in addition to looking at any types of spatial intersection with these. So once again, I'm going to go to these tools. I'm going to click on Intersect. Input features are going to be my Guilford High Schools. And I'm going to look at my uh, Guilford zip code voting data because the, and I could use it for the entire data set, but it won't matter because I'm just working with this input data set. And I'm going to run this. And so a lot of times people will run these and they might use the spa you know, spatial join as well. And we, we've got different uh, permutations of this where that now if I look at this intersect, what have I done for each of these high schools? I go all the way to the right. I can look at the COVID rate for the zip code within that high school where the median household income, the total population, the spending on fruits and vegetables or whatever I want to do. So I can assign attributes from one to the other using the intersect. So this intersects a very powerful tool. Okay. Very, very powerful tool. And what I've done a couple examples with polygons on polygons and then with points on polygons. Last thing I want to use, now I have these Guilford High Schools. I have these uh, Guilford High Schools right here. And I have these food deserts. I want to see what schools are closest to a food desert versus schools that are furthest away from a food desert. You know, so areas where kids around those schools have to travel further. There's been a lot of studies as to especially high schools, the type of food that are located within a certain distance of schools because students have the you know, ability to drive. So those are going to be the types of foods that they'll see there as they're coming and going from different schools. And so when I go to my tools, under analysis, I've got my extract, I've got my overlay, I've got my proximity. Now we already created a buffer. These and polygons are another powerful tool that create essentially like drive sheds, uh, their mathematical computations. Uh, we're going to look at the near buffer. Okay. My input features are going to be my Guilford High Schools. And the near features are going to be my tracks. Now when I click on this button here, the, cal the near function calculates distance and additional proximity information between the input features and the closest feature. So I'm finding the distance between the high school and the nearest food desert. Okay, in this case, they're, they're grouped in census tracts, however many, however many census tracts we have here. I'm going to leave everything else the same. I'm going to run this. Okay, let's see what it gave me. I'm going to X out of this and I'm going to go back to my contents. Now, my Guilford High Schools, it doesn't look anything special when we look at the attribute table. If I go all the way to the right, look what I have here. I have the nearest FID, okay, so the nearest feature ID for the food desert, and then how far away it really is. Okay, so we can see these schools that are furthest away from the food deserts versus schools that are closest. Oh. So schools that are furthest away versus schools that are closest. And so this is a very, very, very powerful tool that lets me map distance and explore spatial variations with these. So in conclusion here, 
I've got the near function, a great function, and all that does is just adds brand new attributes representing a feature ID and a distance. We use the clip as a data preparation tool. And the last thing we did was an intersect. So maybe we can combine buffers to look for some that are the same. Or we can also run a union, which is basically it's going to include every single feature with it on all the spatial and extent of the input feature classes. So these are very powerful tools. I'd suggest opening these up, running these. You know, I've been, mentioned some things about identity, uh, dissolves uh, that I've talked about before, as well as the aforementioned spatial joins and the buffers.